Wonderful to have the talents and the care shown right here. Thank you so much. So our scripture today, I think, is a little bit difficult to follow along. I don't know if you are really following along or not, but I do encourage you to reach for one of these pew Bibles and find your way to the very back. I mean, it's really far back there. So you're going to see this much of the Bible at the front. It's a lot. It's very little. Where are we going? Back to John, John 14. Because I want you to sort of see it with your eyes, not just sort of have it as an echo up in the, the, the uh, lectern there. Because it's an interesting reading. So we're at uh, John 14. And uh, let's see, where were we starting there? 23, is that it? Yes. All righty, 23 through 29. So let's just read it aloud as it's been done in this Bible. And if you, hopefully you are there. All right. John 14, verse 23. Here we go, let's read aloud. Jesus answered him, Whoever loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and my Father and I will come to him and live with him. Whoever does not love me does not obey my teaching, and the teaching you have heard is not mine, but comes from the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am still with you. The Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and make you remember all that I have told you. Peace is what I leave with you. It is my own peace that I give you. I do not give it as the world does. Do not be worried and upset. Do not be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am leaving, but I will come back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father, for he is greater than I. I have told you this now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. All right, so we're going to stop there, 29. That was a, I don't know. So when you read something like that, what, it's okay, don't be afraid to give me your straightforward impressions. You know, it's a little convoluted, isn't it? Millicent's going, she knew it was going to ask right away. She was going, yeah, yeah, it's sort of strange. Any other thoughts about what, how it speaks to us? Any, anything else? Any other comment? All right, now I'm going to tax you just a little bit further. I want you to go back one chapter. Just go back to the book of Luke. So it's just right next door to it. Go backwards in the Bible to Luke 14. Oh, they're all different pages. So just go back a little bit. There you go. So, yeah, Luke 14. I have 104, it happens to be. All right. Try it. It may not be working in yours, but you just got to go back one book, and you'll see Luke 14. And we're going to go to Luke 14, verse 7, and let's read from Luke 14, verse 7. Let's all read that aloud, and we'll stop at 12. We'll just stop before we read 12. So number, uh, uh, verse 7, here we go. Jesus noticed how some of the guests were choosing the best places, so he told this parable to all of them. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not sit down in the best place. It could happen that someone more important than you has been invited and your host and you and both of you would have to come and say to you, let him have this place. Then you would be embarrassed and have to sit in the lowest place. Instead, when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place so that your host will come to you and say, come on up, my friend, to a better place. This will bring you honor in the presence of all the other guests. For everyone who makes himself great will be humbled, and everyone who humbles himself will be made great. Now, when you read something like that, what is your general impression? Just about the tone of the writing? Telling uh, people like the Pharisees and 
Okay. But let's not even worry about the reading. What do, he's trying to make the point. How did that sound to you? Huh? Preachy. preachy. Sounded preachy to somebody. It made sense. It made sense. Yes. Don't blow your own horns. Don't blow your own horns. He's holding up humbleness. He's holding up humbleness. Okay. So generally what I'm trying to, you know, somebody said it's a little bit more easy to understand. That's really what I was going for. The book of John is this, you, I've told you about John before. Do you remember anything I've told you about John? Anything? His name was John. His name was John. Forrest, thank you. We're trying to go for the simple. We're trying to understand everything. Good. Yes. Okay, so Mike is suggesting John is more accusational, maybe even harsh. Other words that you want to come up for, with it? Anything? This seems more formal, doesn't it? Exactly, it's much more formal. You see, in the book of Luke, uh, the whole idea of uh, the story of Jesus is being, is being taught to people who, who really don't know. Jesus that much. And in fact, Luke is trying to reach out to the, the world rather than just one little community. But in John, it's much more, I'll say the word refined. I'll say the word um, focused. And it's almost as if at times it's in code because it says Jesus talking very, very narrowly about himself and who he is and his relationship to God and his relationship to you and God's relationship to you in this it's very tight circle. And that's exactly what the book of John was written for, a very tight circle, a very specific community. It wasn't written for the world. In fact, it was sort of like, you never heard the, the minister say he was preaching to the choir? When you preach to the choir, those people are already here. You don't have to convince them they're going to be here every week. That's what that means. You don't have to try hard because they're always going to be here. So you're preaching to the choir. They're already believers. That's the way it was with John. They were already believers. There's no question in their mind whatsoever. So that's why oftentimes in churches that are very much uh, about um, uh, abs being absolute about their teachings, John will be used more than anything else. Why? Because John was taught to a bunch of people who were already believers. Okay? Whereas Luke, they may have been just getting understanding Jesus for the first time. Okay? So that's why in high church situations, the book of John is used all the way because it says, all of a sudden it says, you know, there's no room for doubt in the book of John. All right? Jesus says, I am the way, by the way. I am the light. I am the bread of life. I am, darn it all. No questions asked. So when Jesus, in this reading here, in the book of John, John 14, verse uh, 13, 23, that I finally found myself at, he's telling everybody in here sort of an absolute message. Whoever loves me will obey my teaching. So therefore, my Father, God, will love him, and my Father and I will come to him and live with him. Whoever does not love me does not obey my teaching, and the teaching you have heard is not mine, but comes from the Father who sent me. It's, it's like very convoluted. It doesn't, it, it, you know, sometimes you go, what? Huh? What are you talking about? Now, Jesus then also this is teaching us about, I have told you this while I am still with you. And then he says, the helper. Have you ever heard anything about the helper? In the other version that we read, Susan read, the word was advocate. Okay, the advocate. Have you ever heard anything about the advocate? Anything? Ever heard about the, in the Bible before? Who might the advocate be? Any clue? Sir? Oh, and might be the Holy Spirit. Amen. Going to hear an hallelujah. There you go. Hey, I got you to do it. Wow. Amen. That's what I'll say. Well, so here Jesus is really pushing hard 
uh, or not necessarily Jesus, it's the person who's telling Jesus' story. Uh, he's preaching to the choir, all right? Now, I know in this group there's a mixed bag of belief, of faith, of understanding. Some people are here for the community. Others are here because, darn it all, Jesus is the way, no way, which were, no matter what, okay? And if I were to thump the Bible, they'd go, amen. And that's really, in many ways, what this version of this, this reading, this whole reading, is about. Is Jesus is describing to you, if, if you're going to be here and you're going to sign on to the, the belief, of course, that Jesus is the way. Jesus is saying, well, you know what? You follow me, you obey the teachings, you live with, within these rules, God is with you. All right? So I, I really at times want to really point that out about how strongly John is telling people this. And, and at times, you remember also something sort of, I don't want to say sinister about John, but I do want to say is, is, is pretty awful about one of the things that the writer John has, puts into Jesus' mouth. Now, remember who uh, uh, the, the disciples were hiding uh, in, the, in, the, in the house after uh, uh, after Jesus was crucified, uh, they were hiding in the house because of what? The Jews. the Jews. Thank you, Daniel. So John, again, speaking to a very focused community, gets really hard core here and separates himself, even from the Jews, even though Jesus is a Jew, for crying out loud. Okay? So we need to be careful at times. I mean, this is a, a, a roundabout way, though, of Jesus saying to us, you know, I got you covered. Hang with me. Stay with me. And I got you covered. Now, I don't know if I've ever, and you can correct me, and I'm probably wrong, but I like to think that Jesus never really ever says, guess what? You follow me, nothing bad is ever going to happen to you. I don't know if he ever said that. I don't think he did. Like I said, I could be totally wrong. I'm willing to be wrong for the sake of the truth. But it's not about Jesus or God coming forward and saying, I've got everything covered. You're never going to have to worry about pain or sorrow or disappointment or betrayal or tragedy in your life. It's nothing about that. Despite the fact that Jesus speaks so clearly in the book of John, I still think that in the end, it's about the fact that when, especially when troubling things come before us, that we will hopefully, because we've been so close to Jesus, we will be the ones in the rooms who will be the adults. We're not going to be the ones who panic. Instead, we will take the situation for what it is, and we will do the best we possibly can in the midst of turmoil and fear and maybe hatred or repression, even upon us. That's why sometimes we don't want to go in and, 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 and fix a problem because we know the other person is getting attacked so hard we're afraid to be attacked also. But I want to assure you something. You'll be taken care of and given the right things if you move into a situation like that with heart, spirit, conviction, courage, love, compassion. And yeah, you may be part of it, the target then, but I promise you, for the good of the world, you have saved the world because you stood up for something that was important and true. So, my friends, may you believe in him and God will be there also. And may you know that God believes in you and stands with you in all ways, in all purposes, as long as your heart is there to help. May the Lord be with you. Let us pray.